This is a load of nonsense. It's silly nonsense. It's adults playing games and saying, oh, let's not bother with students learning number facts. It's too cumbersome, it takes too long. Today teachers, I'm Dr. Peter Price. Welcome to this video, which is a personal review of the consultation curriculum for mathematics for year four proposed for 2022. Let's move on, this is algebra number three. The old content descriptor was a short one. It said recall multiplication facts up to 10 times 10 and related division facts. Simple, straightforward, and nice, nice and brief, straight to the point. The new one says recognize, recall, and explain patterns in basic multiplication facts up to 10 times 10 and addition division facts. Extend and apply these patterns to develop increasingly efficient mental strategies for computation with large numbers. This all sounds good. There's not much that many people would argue with here, except for this one word that's been removed and that's recall. Recall multi multiplication facts. Recall implies memorization. It implies a process by which students will come to know what the number facts are so they can recall them when needed. It's a very, very valuable skill. The new content descriptor includes the word recall. It says recognize, recall, and explain patterns in basic multiplication facts up to 10 times 10. Recognize, recall, and explain patterns, not number facts. Students are somehow having to commit patterns to memory rather than committing number facts to memory. Now, if someone wants to argue that by patterns they really mean number facts, then I'll say, fine, take the word pattern out and put number facts back in. If this is recalling number facts, then let, let it say recall number facts. This is clever. It's almost tricky language. It's asking students to recall patterns in basic multiplication facts. I don't even know what that means. Recall Patterns. I can recall a pattern that there are doubles in the two times number facts. So all the two times number facts are doubles. And the patterns are that the answers are all even. The pattern in the five times number facts is that they end with five or zero in the ones place. Okay, big deal. If you need to know that five sevens are 35, where are you going to get that from if you've only recalled a pattern? If you've memorized the pattern, it takes you two seconds to memorize the pattern for the fives, fives and zeros. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You can see 35 is in there. So if it's five times seven, we need to know we can find it in the pattern. But how do you find that specific answer? If it's five times seven, we don't want a pattern of answers. We want the exact answer 35. How is a student going to get to 35? I'll tell you. They'll use their fingers. They'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Because this is the seventh finger, and 35 is the seventh multiple of 5, using the pattern that we've memorized, now we can find the answer is 35. What a load of nonsense. Students don't need to memorize patterns. They need to know the patterns, they need to learn the patterns, they can explore the patterns, discover the patterns, and all the rest of the verbs that go with patterns. They can develop strategies using those patterns for memorization of number facts, and then they can learn the number facts off by heart. They can memorize them so that they know the answer. So when someone says to them, quick, what's five times seven? They go, 35, not, Hang on a minute, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 35. You can see how ridiculous that is. We don't want students counting on fingers. We don't want them using calculators. We don't want them using a chart on the wall. And that's exactly what they'll use if no one has bothered to teach them to know their number facts. Now, my example here was 5 times 7. That's one of the easy ones. What are the patterns of... <sighs> The seven times number facts. Now you know, and I know, there are no patterns in the sevens. The patterns are, they all increment by seven each time, and they're all multiples of seven. And the difference between one multiple and the next multiple is seven. That's it. The pattern is seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 
56, 63, 70. There's no pattern. There is no pattern. We can memorize the patterns till the cows come home. We won't have a pattern for the sevens other than I can recite the multiples of seven in a sequence and then I can find the one I want by counting on my fingers to get to the one that I want. Let's do a fairly easy multiple of seven. Four times seven. Now I say easy because we can get there using a different strategy if we know the strategy. Four sevens is the same as double seven doubled again. Double seven doubled again. So double seven is 14, double 14 is 28. That's a strategy based on a pattern. There's nothing wrong with patterns. It's just that the, it, the learning shouldn't stop there. But to return to our example, if the question was four times seven and all you'd done was memorize patterns, many students would go, hang on a minute, that's seven, 14, 21, 28. See what I mean? Memorizing patterns just won't cut it. It won't do it for us and it won't do it for our students. I'm extremely frustrated by this. I'm probably less emotional because I've done this. I've prepared a video on this topic a couple of times recently and I, maybe some of the steam's gone out of my sails, but wow, this is bad news. This is really bad news. Students are not being asked to recall number facts and that's a mistake. Let's just go back to that previous content descriptor where it did say they were recalling number facts and see if we can rescue the curriculum writers. Here we are, it's in the third number content descriptor. Remember it was about using estimating and rounding to find solutions to problems, including calculations of change to the nearest five cents by Recalling and applying number facts. By recalling and applying number facts. That doesn't make any sense, does it? In light of the fact that algebra number three, I think it is, content descriptor, says that students will be recalling and explaining patterns in the multiplication facts. They won't be recalling number facts. And no one said they were going to recall addition and subtraction facts either. And if you're thinking of year three, which is where they currently are learned, they're not doing it in year three either, according to the new curriculum. They're exploring patterns. Go for the patterns. But this number, content descriptor number three, says they will solve problems, including financial calculations, by recalling and applying number facts. I'm really emphasizing this point because the, whoever wrote this content descriptor knew that recalling and applying number facts would be a useful skill if you're going to be solving problems involving the operations, including money, and knowing your number facts and applying the number facts will be really useful. I think we should put that in there, don't you? Yes, I do. But whoever wrote the other content descriptor for algebra number three left it out deliberately and talked about recalling patterns. Recalling patterns. That's a bizarre premise on its face. What do you mean? Recall patterns. I can recall lots of things. I can recall, I don't know, I can remember seeing patterns before. I can recall patterns, but it's not useful, is it? This is a load of nonsense. I've used different phrases in different videos, but this seriously is a load of nonsense. It's silly nonsense. It's adults playing games and saying, oh, let's not bother with students learning number facts. It's too cumbersome. It takes too long. I know the reason why many, many, many people have a problem with memorization of number facts. It's because they conflate, to use a big academic word, they conflate recall of number facts and memorization of number facts with rote learning of number facts. Nobody said rote learning. It doesn't say it in the existing curriculum. No one has proposed rote learning for teaching number facts with any credibility over the last several decades. I remember doing it when I was at school, but that was in the 1960s. No one here is talking about rote learning. It hasn't seriously been proposed as a teaching technique for learning number facts for decades. Now, it is true that you can use rote learning to learn things. You can use rote learning to learn number facts. Like I said, that's something that I did in the 1960s when I was a child. 
I've grown up a bit since then and I've learned there are more ways to learn number facts. There are better ways to learn number facts. None of them involve rote learning. They involve a certain amount of repetition, a certain amount of practice until the child has remembered the number facts, but they don't involve, they don't involve mindless repetition. Repetition of noises, that's rote learning. So if I say to you 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, that is a sequence of numbers which has no pattern visible in it if you just say it orally like that. And it's true, if you say that pattern often enough, eventually it will sink in. Of course, those numbers on their own aren't much use. You need to say 3, 1's a 3. And we would always say it twice, three ones are three, three twos are six, three twos are six, three threes are nine, three threes are nine, on and on and on and on. So if you had to know three sixes, you'd have to go, three sixes are 18, three sixes are 18. Here's a solution to that quandary that curriculum writers might be in saying, what are we going to do? We don't want to do rote learning. No, we're going to use strategies. We're going to use sensible, cognitive computational strategies. Three times is the same as double a number plus an extra group of that number. So that's a strategy. So instead of learning the sequence of multiples of three, we can say, what is double that number and add another one. So if the example was six times three, as I mentioned before, you could say, what is six times two? That's an easier number fact, that's 12. And what is 12 plus another six? And that's 18. So students can learn these, the number facts without any rote learning whatsoever by focusing on patterns, yes, and then learning strategies for thinking about the numbers and then memorizing the number facts. At some point, they do need to commit these number facts to memory. And then we can get to the point of this third algebra content descriptor where it says, extend and apply these patterns to, I would say, extend and apply these number facts to develop increasingly efficient mental strategies. Yes, 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 for computation with larger numbers. So we're not going to recall patterns, we're going to recall number facts. And then we can extend what students know by extending what they do with those number facts. So they are not restricted to knowing just the numbers up to nine times nine, so they can answer questions like, what is 900 times 3? If they know 9 threes, they can do 900 threes. And they can do decimal fractions. What is 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.3? That's a tricky example, but still based on the number fact, 9 threes is 27. And I didn't have to recall a pattern and then plan my way through the pattern to find the answer to the question 3 times 9 in order to get there. Because I know my number facts, 3 9s to 27 is something that I've memorized that I can recall. That's what our students should be doing. Okay. I encourage you to watch the video I did of year three or the, or the excerpt from year three where I talk about students not learning number facts anymore, where I summarize my thoughts on the point in more detail and I talk about academics and why the push to remove number facts from the curriculum, I believe, has come squarely from the academic community and we should fight back and take it back.